Hey guys, welcome back. Hey guys. If you are into crime, this is the channel for you. Today's title, are you ready? Detective mode activate. Let me get out my other modes. Someone in this photo. Hold on, my brain went. It went really. <laughs> Come on, get it together. All right, someone in this photo has a evil secret. Fair warning, the ending to this story is very abrupt and very upsetting. But before we get into today's story, if you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, then you've come to the right place because that's all we do, and we upload once or twice every week. So if that's of interest to you, please offer to curl the like button's hair for their wedding, but then repeatedly touch the top of their ear with the curling iron. Also, please subscribe to our channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly uploads. All right, let's get into today's story. Do that for our channel. That's lit. Subscribe. I'm ready. Who has a secret? Can I see the photo? It's like we're playing Clue. The strangers. Strongsville, Ohio used to be just another typical quiet American suburb. Nice homes, nice families, nice restaurants, and a mall. But in late 2017, a discovery was oh, made in fresh. Strongsville that put this town on the map in okay. the worst way possible. To understand this discovery, we need to go back to early 2016 when this town's nightmare began. In early 2016, two longtime Strongsville residents, Bruce and Melinda Pleskovic, received some very exciting news. Their 20-year-old daughter named Anna and her 20-year-old fiancé named Jeff had just told them they were expecting a baby, a baby yeah, girl. And so Bruce and Melinda were totally excited about the prospect of okay. finally becoming grandparents. But at the same time, they knew Anna and Jeff did not have very much money. Anna still lived at home with yeah. Bruce and Melinda. She did have a job, but she made very little money. She was a waitress at a local Applebee's restaurant. And as for Jeff, he had a better job working as a service technician for a heating and air company, but he didn't have enough money. To That's what I just said. Like, they're young, 20. Hold on, hold on. 20 on. engaged and already a baby on the way, and she's still living at all home. Right, like, all right, all right. Cool. Y'all know me. I'm early detective. I'm in early detective mode. Y'all know I gotta come early. Y'all know how we do on this channel. I'm coming early I'm with. Not. Don't start. Don't start. Don't bring that energy. Um, that's just my red flag. So far, it's just that they're young. Okay. We got the photo. We ain't got the photo, but I'm going off of parents, child, engaged, or married? Engaged. Engaged. Baby, but they broke. Parents they're don't like They're not broke. Parents they don't like don't it. Have the parents don't like it. Moment. Somebody about to die. One of them, keep, they about somebody no, gonna die. They're not broke. It's just it's not somebody the best gonna time. die. Support him and Anna. In fact, he didn't even have enough money to move out of his parents' home. He was still living with them on the other side of Strongsville. And so this couple, they're really excited about their baby, mm -hmm. but Bruce and Melinda are thinking, you know, we really got to find a way to support them because they are just not prepared for this yeah, first child. Prepared. And so okay, Bruce and Melinda, they talked it over and they decided the best way to support this young couple Let's was to the tell house. their daughter if she wanted to, she could invite Jeff to come stay at their house. Yeah, that way the in. two of them could be together. It's and once rules. they had their daughter, Bruce and Melinda could be the great grandparents and help take care of the baby. Mm -hmm. And in general, this would allow the couple to just continue to save money mm -hmm. and move out when they were ready. And so when they told Anna they were willing to do this, Anna was so happy. She was so grateful. He's not she gonna called be happy. Jeff and Jeff was equally happy and oh, grateful okay, and said, okay. yes, I would love to move in with you guys. So it took several months, but finally in June of 2016, which was the same month that Jeff and Anna welcomed their daughter to the world, Jeff would leave his parents' home and move into Bruce and Melinda's home. And okay. almost immediately after he moved in, he and the rest of Anna's family began experiencing some very strange and disturbing things around their property. Just a few days after Jeff had moved in, he and Anna were home alone. They were on the main floor of the house and they were having dinner at the kitchen table. And at some point, Jeff just happened to glance out one of the back windows that looked out into their backyard. And now this property had this huge sprawling backyard. Gosh, that's huge. Basically, they had all these houses kind of in a row and they all had almost like a communal backyard, this big open space. And so Jeff is looking out into this huge backyard and he sees off in the distance something strange. He doesn't really know what he's looking at because it's nighttime, it's dark, but he stands up and he walks over to the window and as he's looking out, he sees way off on the backside of their property are these four strangers just standing there appearing to be smoking something and they're just kind of looking up at the Pleskovic house. I was way off. That's what I get from my early detective not skills. I was not. Oh four strangers? my God. I've seen this movie. But my thing is, why did it start when he moved in? 
Yeah, something. Why happened. did it start when he moved in? Something. Old. And when the baby came. But how do you react to, like, if you, in your kitchen, our backyard ain't that big, but imagine, you know, you're looking out there, you see four, well, what is your, how are you handling this situation? I'm going to be like, what the Who I is always, that? Who are you? Send, I always, D knows my saying, you know how to send out the dogs. Send out the dogs. What a coincidence, though, right? When they have the baby and he moves in, this is happening. Bye. And so Jeff is looking out the window at these four, not really sure what to make of them. And he calls Anna over. And so Anna walks over. Does and the two you? of them are looking out, not really sure what to do. I mean, on the one <coughs> hand, these four people who they clearly didn't know or they believed they didn't know were definitely trespassing. Okay. But at the same time, they weren't really doing anything. They were just kind of standing there smoking. But as they're watching these four people, one of them begins walking up the property towards their home oh and then stops alongside the Pleskovic trampoline which was in their backyard and this person begins fiddling with the trampoline and so at this Anna's like you know what I don't know what they're doing I feel totally uncomfortable and so Anna would actually call the police mm -hmm. and so the police they come out but by the time the squad car arrived yes. in front of the Pleskovic house the four people in back must have seen the car and they took off running and so when the police officer went in the backyard and looked around there was no one there, and there was also no sign they were there. There was no drop cigarette so butts or anything. They just kind of vanished. And so the police officer told Jeff and Anna, if they come back, you know, let us know. And so the officer left. And then a little while later, when Bruce and Melinda came home, Jeff and Anna would tell them about what happened, and they would agree that that was totally strange, that in all the decades they had lived in Strongsville, exactly. they had never had anybody stroll onto their property and just loiter in the middle of the night. And so for the next couple of days, the family was definitely on edge but after a little while this whole incident was largely forgotten about fast forward about five months to november 2016 and anna was home alone with her young daughter and she's playing with her daughter on the first floor of the house towards the front of the house and as she's playing with her daughter she suddenly hears what sounds like someone trying to open the back sliding glass door on the back of what? the house and so instinctively anna thinks okay you know jeff must be out there or my parents must be out there and they don't have a key or something Thing. And so she scoops up her daughter and she begins walking <coughs> towards the back of the house to open the store for them. And when she walks into one of the back rooms, before she reaches the back door, she happens to look out one of the windows that looked out into the backyard. And standing right up against the glass is this unknown male figure with his. Um, that's that's not my first initial thought of way, like, oh, someone's trying to come in the house. Oh, they forgot their key. What? We have cell phones, and why are you not calling yourself? Like, no. Look, we went from, you look, y'all over here went from sending us murder. Well, I don't know. Somebody, I don't, I'm, I'm, somebody could be murdered, but. Y'all went to the murder mysteries, so now we over here in October. We got people outside like this is the movie. Like, so I feel like I'm watching what the movie. What movie are you talking about? Strangers. They be outside the house like that. They was like, oh, I don't know. They I just got, you know. never seen The Strangers? No. It messed me up when I was young. I've never messed heard of it. Messed me up. You will never look out the window the same. But you're always nosy and look out the window. That's why we got dogs and cameras and stuff. This is type of stuff. God, I don't need to go outside. Black people always die first, y'all. We can't do it. We got to have all the protection we need before we step out there. Face pressed up against the glass. Okay. And so Anna just freezes and stares at this guy. And then this guy, he notices Anna and he ducks down out of view. And now Anna's thinking to herself, this is the guy. He must have been trying to break in my back door. I'm home alone. I don't know what's going on here. I don't this know if he's going to try to break in again. What a baby and so she just turns and runs back towards the front of the house. She runs upstairs. She goes in the bedroom. She locks the door and she calls the police. But okay. by the time the police come out there and they look around, they they can't find this unknown that figure that was from? at the back of the house and there's no sign of an attempted forced entry and so unfortunately they told her look you know i'm sure this was very traumatic for you but there's really nothing we can do here there's no I need a squad to car outside my house who did Strike this two. and so please just you know keep your house locked and if you see anybody suspicious on call your property us. call us back and so naturally after the police left and anna had a chance to contact jeff and her parents they were horrified and they rushed home to comfort her and then after the initial shock of this incident had worn off the family began to speculate you know do you think this might be connected to those four strangers mm -hmm. we saw on our property a few months ago? Yeah, it just it seems connected. odd that those two things would happen so close together. Well, it was five and months. then the it's family began close. to think, okay, well then, who is this person? Who are yeah. these people? What do they want? Why are they targeting us? What's going on? Because as it was, the <coughs> Pleskovic family, they didn't have any enemies, at least none that they knew of. If anything, the people of Strongsville adored this family, especially Melinda, the mother. For the past 20 plus years, she had been a middle school 
school teacher in town nice. and her students adored her. She was also a big time soccer coach in the community because she had played in college and she was still very passionate about it. So she That's was this good. amazing coach. And in the eyes of many parents in the Strongsville community, Melinda was a bit of an inspiration. Boyfriend, like you said, he, he, this stuff ain't happening until he came. The house has been completely calm until he came into the house. They ain't had no four strangers standing out there before he came. So he is the secret. He brought some crap in his house. Mm -hmm. They should have used their antennas early because I would have said, you got to go. Well, he has to got to go. I'm, I'm just listening. What about his parents? I call his parents. Have y'all ever had anybody outside your house? Yeah, but they're not thinking that. They better use their antennas. They're not thinking that. Come on, he gotta go. She was not only the mother to Anna, she was also the mother of an 18 year old boy named Kyle who had Down syndrome and was nonverbal. And Melinda just had this unbelievable way with him where she was so good to him. She incorporated him in everything. She got him so involved. She gave him the best life he could possibly have. Okay. And so anytime you saw Kyle with his mother, Kyle would be all smiling. <coughs> Even though Kyle couldn't speak, it was so obvious his mother made him incredibly happy. But regardless of the reason for these strangers to be lurking around their property, the Pleskovic family was now totally on edge and mm -hmm. found themselves constantly looking out the windows, especially at night, in fear these strangers were going to come back and might try to break in again. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. these strangers would come back. In January of 2017, so two months after Anna saw that unknown figure at the close. window and heard the back door sliding around, Bruce's car was broken into. It was sitting in the driveway of their property. Someone got inside of it and stole his laptop. And so Bruce, he calls the police and he says, you know, I've got to believe this has to do with the people that are harassing my family. And the police believed him and they began looking around and asking around, but they could they never the track down the laptop the or the thief. And so once again, the family was kind of left on their own. And the police said, look, you know, if you see anything else, let us know. But there's not much we can do here. A few months laptop. later, in July of that year, Anna, Jeff, and their daughter were all home together one night when Anna happened to look out one of the back windows on their first floor and out on the very back of the property were three strangers just standing in that what same spot the where they saw those four strangers smoking the year before. And these three strangers are just standing there looking up at the house. And so horrified, Anna calls out to Jeff and says, look, there are three people in the back of our property. And so Anna, she pulls out her phone and she's calling the police. Take and as she's calling them. the police, Jeff, who's totally upset that there are these people harassing him and his family and outside. making them feel unsafe, he just grabs a flashlight and storms out the back door to go confront these people. But as soon as Jeff went out the back door, before he could even shine the light on them, the three people had turned and ran and vanished. And so finally, when the police did show up, they were aware of all the calls they had gotten from this family. And so they went out there and they did a serious search for these three strangers, but like nothing always, again. nothing was found. And so the family once again was told, if you see anything else, let us know. This is so crazy. I got to bear, you got to bear arms at this point. Hey, no, nah, no, nah, I'm chitty chitty bang bang. Somebody gonna get dropped. Oh my gosh. Come I'm up not, in here if you want. What is, I, 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 this one has me a little stuck because I just feel like, okay, they got a laptop, it wasn't a laptop, but then again, it's like, okay, are these just people that, you know, are those crazy people that want to mess with people? I don't know. I'm but... sending a message back. The way they standing in my backyard is the same way I'm be standing at the at my door like this. Come up in here if y'all <laughs> want. I'm letting y'all know. How they <laughs> doing the Malibu smoke on it? <laughs> Click it together. Come in here if y'all want. You're going to find out. I would leave like a sign on my glass window. I already know you're watching. You will be shot. Come in here if you want. If you want to meet, go to the upper room, you're going to find out. Following month, which was August, Anna was home with her daughter along with her mother who was upstairs. And as Anna is in the front of the house in the playroom with her daughter, she hears the sound of somebody trying to open that back sliding Again? door. Again? And now immediately her radar is up because she knows what happened the last time she yes. heard the sound. There was that person in the window. But she's thinking, okay, I can't just immediately call the police. I need to at least look and see if there's someone that I know at the back door. No, so I would have called the police. She scoops her daughter up, she just... stands up, and she walks around to the edge of the room she's in, and she kind of peeks her head down this hallway that will give her a clear view of it? this back sliding glass door. And once she finally has a full view of whoever is there, she screams because there are two large adults, as she would say, standing at the back door trying to force open see, the door. And so when she screams, these two strangers, they hear it, they turn around and they run. And Melinda, she was upstairs, she
She hears her daughter screaming. She what? comes flying downstairs. She's trying to figure out what's going on. Anna is hysterical. The baby's crying. And so Melinda actually calls the police about what her daughter has just seen. The police come out. They search the property. Colleen. They can't find anyone. And so again, the police leave and they tell the family. They're not calling when they Sorry, need to this call. Is happening to you, but we can't do anything. So please just let us know if anything else happens. God, this and we'll is be crazy. Out we can. You know, we're bound to catch these people, but mm. you know, right now we just don't have much to operate on. The following month, which was September, one of Melinda's car keys would go missing. And whoever had these keys, whoever had stolen these keys, would use it to randomly start Melinda's car in the middle of the night. And they also used it to set off her car alarm at odd hours of the night. And then what? also during this time frame that her keys were missing, so they, had to be they close. also discovered that there were nails jammed into the tires of Bruce's car. And so, of course, you know, the family calls the police and tells them about what's going on, but the police can't do anything. And so very frustrated, Melinda actually takes to Facebook and posts that someone's stolen her keys and please just give them back and just overall she's pleading with whoever is harassing her family to just leave them alone but unfortunately this post would not do anything the harassment would continue a month later on october 19th jeff was home alone when he heard the sound of the back sliding glass door rattling and now he knows that every time this has been heard by anna that there's always some stranger at the back door and okay. so jeff grabs the family dog Dog, and he very carefully turns and looks down that hallway towards the back door to see who this is. Do they have a and dog? right as he pokes his head out, he sees there's this large adult figure with a hood up trying to open this back door. And so the dog sees this person and starts barking and running towards the door. The Jeff runs late. after the dog and this big person outside is trying to break in. He sees the dog, he sees Jeff running and he turns and he runs away. And so back Jeff up. and the dog, they stay inside the house and they watch this guy just take off across the property and disappear. <laughs> appear into the trees and Jeff would call the police. Why did they even put cameras? I didn't even know they had why, a damn dog. Why didn't they put cameras after the second? Hell, after the third. Why are you not putting cameras? Why don't you have 911 on speed dial? Like, what? I feel like there's too many stuff that they could have, they they could have solved this a long time My ago. Is, this whole time, I'm sitting here talking about dog. What kind of dog they got? The dog, they shaking doors and the dog ain't barking. I'm Come saying, shake this, this door if you want to. Come I'm shake this. Saying, our dog. There's like, can't, there's so many things that we could have done. Come shake these doors if you won't. If you ever seen the master for seen Sandlot, you understand. Come shake these <coughs> doors if you won't. You're going to find out. 160 pounds coming right at you. This, find this out. Is, this is annoying me because the anticipation for it is like, what is happening? Who is this? But like always, the police came out and there just was nothing they could do. Four days later, Something. on October 23rd, Jeff, along with his young daughter and Bruce, they went to the local Applebee's where Anna worked to have dinner there and have Anna wait on them. Okay. And then after they were done eating, they said their goodbyes to Anna. They left I'll the restaurant, they hopped in their cars, and they drove back to their house. When they got there, Bruce was the first up the steps, and he got to the front door, and it was locked. And so he knocked, and Kyle, his son, he came and unlocked the door. Bruce went inside, followed closely behind by Jeff, who was holding his daughter. They get inside and Bruce walks through the house to the back of the house where the kitchen is. He flips on the lights and there's something on the kitchen floor. And when Jeff sees it, he immediately turns around and runs out of the house carrying his daughter. He grabs the Kyle along the way and just takes them straight out of the house. And then once Jeff was outside, he called 911. And when you listen to Not his 911 call, it sounds like Jeff is unable to process what he has just seen. 911, what's the address of your emergency? Uh, <laughs> Somebody, somebody's been attacked in my house. Somebody's been what? Attacked. They attacked who? Who was attacked? Uh, uh, Mel Pluskovic. Mel Pluskovic was attacked. He was attacked by whom? Do you know? She, she was no, we, we just came home. She's on the kitchen floor. Jeff and Bruce had just discovered Melinda lying on the kitchen floor. She'd been stabbed over 35 times and what? shot three times. She would be rushed to the hospital, but she would die that night. Although the family was in shock and couldn't even begin to process what had just happened, they were all acutely aware that whoever had done this to Melinda had okay. to be connected to mm -hmm. all of these strange and suspicious people that had been yeah. lurking around their property for the better part of two years. In fact, literally after Jeff had called 911, Bruce was inside in the kitchen kneeling next to his dying wife and he called 911 and he would tell the dispatcher that the Strongsville Police Department really dropped the ball. 911, what city is the emergency in? 
please come to one for Blazing Star. I think my wife's dead. Someone, tell me, we've had people city. breaking into our f***ing house, sir. and now someone f***ing killed her. Sir, tell me the city you need to talk to. Strongsville, Ohio. Okay, you need to be transferred. Don't hang up. What kind of that one, one is this? Hey. What's the city of your emergency? Strongsville, Ohio. We have people on the way already. What's the address? For Blazing Star. I think someone killed my wife. You think someone killed your wife? Yeah, there it looks like okay, she has stab on her back. We've had okay. people trying to break into sir, our house sir, all year. Sir, I to, sir, I need to ask you questions, okay? Are you there right now? I just got in the door with my new son-in-law. My son Kyle was here Okay, what, her. sir, what I want Where's you to Kyle? do is walk outside. The Strongsville Police Department would come out <clears> in <throat> force for this case, and they would solve it in just four days. And when they went public with who killed Melinda, no one could. The son that's spe that uh, that Have was some? special. It could. No, no. I don't. You no. I don't know because who's Kyle's? Kyle is their son that's special. But oh, my thing is, he so. Why did they do? Or was it? What I was gonna get on is he's so mad he can't even be emotional because he going off like. Is it their son breaking in? Y'all ain't did nothing. Is it their son? Back on October 23rd, so this was the night Melinda was discovered, Jeff, along with his young daughter and Melinda and her son Kyle, they were all together in the house. And at some point, Jeff had put his daughter down in her playpen and then went into the kitchen where Melinda was. And he walked up to her, pulled out a knife, and stabbed her over 35 times. What? And then when Melinda fell to the ground, Jeff drew a gun and Why? shot her three additional times the to make sure look? she was dead. Now, while he was doing this, his daughter is literally just a few feet away, and Kyle, presumably, is also right nearby. But he has no way of understanding what's happening to his mother. And so with these two totally innocent lives just right nearby, Jeff would clean off his weapons, and he'd take off his bloody clothes, and he would hide them inside of his car, and then he would just scoop up his daughter, and he would leave the house leaving Kyle alone in the house with his dying mother in the kitchen, just leaves him there, shuts the door, locks it, and then Jeff and his daughter would drive to Applebee's to have dinner with Melinda's husband and her daughter. And then after several hours, when they got back to the property, Jeff knew what was waiting for them inside, and he so still he allowed in Bruce to go Not inside rushed, first and discover his dying wife like on the alibi. kitchen floor. Very little That's is known crazy. about why Jeff did this, because Jeff has actually never come out and given his motive for the crime. The running theory is that Jeff actually was not going to be able to pay for the wedding, which was coming up in a couple of days. And the wedding venue had actually contacted Melinda and said, hey, you know, we're canceling the wedding because your future son-in-law can't pay for it. And All so Melinda apparently confronted Jeff about his financial <laughs> troubles. And the theory is he snapped and killed her. However, that can't possibly be the entire story no. for why he did this, because it would turn out Jeff was found to be responsible for literally every single suspicious event that had taken place around the Pleskovic How? property leading up to the attack. Meaning every time they had seen strangers lurking around their property or he people trying somebody? to break into their house, that had been because of Jeff. Either it was literally Jeff outside being one of these suspicious people, or he had asked home. friends or hired someone or groups of people to pretend to be suspicious people on the property, or Jeff had been the only person to see these suspicious people, and then miraculously, when other people attempted to look outside, you know, they were gone. And so obviously Jeff was lying. And so was I actually had the opportunity to speak with one of Jeff's childhood friends who was actually living roughly in the Strongsville area Area when this horrible murder took place and what this person told me is that what is kind of generally accepted as why Jeff did this according to the people in Strongsville is that Jeff apparently loathed Melinda even though she had opened her house to him he loathed her and as soon as he moved in in 2016 he began plotting to kill her and so all of these suspicious events were Jeff's attempt at building this really intricate alibi that they yeah. had these strangers out there that were targeting this family Family, and so that when she would ultimately be killed by him, it would look like these strangers had done it. And at first, it yeah. totally worked. Everybody believed, the police, the it family, friends, that this strangers had crazy. broken into the house and killed Melinda. 
In fact, there was so little suspicion on yeah. Jeff after her murder that Jeff actually served as a pallbearer in Melinda's funeral. You, but ultimately, what? the police would discover the knife and some bloody clothes in the back of Jeff's car. And so they would arrest him and they would present this mountain of evidence against him. And Jeff would confess to killing Melinda. These stories keep getting it crazier and crazier and crazier. It makes sense, though. That's crazy. But what, his... What is that word? Loved or law? I don't know what that means. What does that mean? He's. This is the first case I've seen somebody actually look professional, though. Like, he had this shit plotted out to the yeah. T. Yeah. But now it makes sense, because he was never there when it would happen, except for that one time. But who did he, did he have friends like with the body? Like did he hire four, somebody? He like probably four hired three or four people out there at the time. He could have hired somebody, but this I don't think it's wild. behind a wedding. I don't think it's behind a wedding. I think it's something deeper. However, he wouldn't give any additional information about the crime. He would just basically say, yes, I did kill her. He would also never give an apology or explanation to the family. He would ultimately be sentenced to life in prison with the opportunity for parole after 33 years. During Jeff's trial, there was this totally heartbreaking moment when Bruce, Melinda's husband, spoke. And he would say their son, Kyle, does not understand that his mother is gone. And so now, every time they go out to eat, which is something Kyle really likes to do and he used to love doing with his mother, he'll just sit and stare out the window, eagerly expecting his mother to show up any minute. But of course, she never does. So that's gonna do it, guys. This is the craziest story I've ever. That actually hurt my heart. But the, the makes it even worse, the family can't even get closure. They can't, and it's like, and you this know, man is caught like, and... her family helped you, moved you in, helped you with your daughter, all this stuff just for you to kill the mom there has to be uh, there has to be an uh, um uh, alter what's it called a uh, um alter no. a motive yeah but it's something else that ain't um alternative motive yeah there you go probably that but I, I i don't think it's behind the wedding i could think maybe he com she confronted him about finances and it got heated but about a wedding i don't it's, I don't it's think like a so. lot of trauma and if you think about it not the the kid that her son that was special mm -hmm. he has to deal with that but they talked about the grandchild the baby which yeah. that's her fault. Like, it's a constant reminder the of The daughter this. who, in a sense, brought... Like, now she has to live with, like, wow, that was my boyfriend, my baby daddy, my my husband. My husband. And it's like, to you know, like, oh, wow. Like, um, I met him, brought him in, just for him this to kill my mom. This story is mind-blowing, Wow, 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 So I'm talking wow. about... So did it go with the movie? No. Oh. It was actually Strangers Outside, and they killed people. Oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I don't even know what to say about this one. Oh, my God. This wow, one this got me. So it sad. got me. Yeah, it did. That, I don't know. I don't know how to feel about this. Let this us one kind of just hurt. Y'all gotta let us know your opinions down below. Yeah. This one is oh. crazy. Send us another one that y'all want us to react to. This is by far probably the craziest. They all have been crazy, but this is by far yeah, the craziest one Yeah, this one takes the hat. To. This one takes the hat. The That's crazy. And I feel so bad because I thought it was a son because, like, I'm like, I'm thinking, maybe but... Maybe he's not understanding what he's doing. Yeah, what like, I thought, think? you know, maybe he, she, he snapped or something. I don't know. But now it's like, wow. Oof. Hmm. And do I want to? Do we want to say until next time? Cause y'all, I might need a break. I might need a couple of days. That one, that one mind bottled me. Until next time, y'all.